everybody and welcome back to Leon Talks Film, or should I say Leon Talks Books, because today I'm talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, a novel by Quentin Tarantino. So yeah, this is the first time I've ever spoken about a book on the channel and I don't know how well this is gonna go, I don't know if people are gonna be interested in this or not, but I thought to keep it a bit more interesting to the usual audience who care more about films, I also am going to be talking about the film itself and how it compares to the novel. So first off, a bit of backstory for those of you who don't know much about the film. So the film uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is the ninth film by Quentin Tarantino. His second to last uh, before he eventually retires because after he's done 10 films he's quitting forever and this is a film that has been very very interesting to me so a bit of backstory with um, my experiences at least the first time I saw this I didn't really know what to think of it I went in kind of expecting a Tarantino film and came out with a more Lebowski type film kind of just a, a film where nothing really it's not a film with a free act structure necessarily it is just more a sequence of events and you're treated to these characters here and you essentially just witness a day or a few days in their lives essentially and when I first saw this I wasn't huge on it now <laughs> I say that like it's a really old film it's only about two years old at this point but I've seen this film about six or seven times <laughs> I saw it again with some friends at the cinema and then absolutely fell in love with it. I went to see it another time at the cinema to um, because they were releasing a extended edition, which was essentially just Sony's way of kind of cashing in on uh, re-releases of films by adding some of the bonus features to the start and the end of a showing. So you got some deleted scenes. That was essentially it. It was really weird and it was kind of a cash grab. and. I, again, I was a bit mixed on the film, but I've seen it quite a few times at home, seen it a few times with my sister. I watched it for my birthday last year with my family and uh, everyone seemed to enjoy it. But I just finished re-watching it again today as I finished the novel over the weekend and I'm recording this on Monday. So I thought, you know what? After reading the novel, I'll watch the film. I'll see if there's any new things I pick up on because there's a lot added in this novel. And there's also a lot exclusive to the film itself, to the, uh, release so let's talk about let's talk about the novel <laughs> so where did the novel come from so usually when you think of a film and a book you usually think the book came first and then the film comes out later down the line and it's an adaptation of the book not in this case. Tarantino said he wants to make a novelization of sorts, and that's exactly what he's done here. So films such as Taxi Driver, Jaws, loads of films, The Omen, for example, all of these films had novelizations that actually came out around the same time of the film, and Tarantino even explains it in some interviews, but they actually worked from an original shooting draft, so that isn't the final draft of the film, which is why quite a few of these novelizations actually turned out fairly different to the end result. And Tarantino was kind of going in that direction, trying to create a really pulpy piece of fiction if you pardon the pun haha <laughs> and that's essentially what this is I I had a blast with this novel and I just want to talk about the actual um, presentation so first off you've got stills from the film almost like a cash grab kind of way but purposely done like in any other case this would seem like a cash grab but in this way it's designed to be that it even says the new novel based on the film I even want to show some of the uh, final frames because it actually has advertisements for stuff like a tie-in novel to Serpico <laughs> and um, also one of my favorites is an advertisement for the deluxe hardcover version of the book this is essentially perfect for what it is just light reading it's nothing that's gonna like blow your mind and make you think wow that is the greatest piece of fiction ever written because it really isn't but if you are a fan of the film, you're going to have an absolute blast with this. So what's different? So first off, the structure in many places. So the same sequence of events throughout both of these is fairly similar, although this kind of deviates in many ways, uh, which in most cases you'd say the film deviates from the book, but the book actually deviates from the film. So you get more character development for characters such as Charles Manson, which I was very surprised by. If you've seen the film, you know that Charles Manson is 
is a prominent part of the film, but he's not a character who you see a great deal of. You only see him in about one or two scenes in the actual film, but he is essentially one of the protagonists of this novel here. And that's not glorifying him in any way, I just want to highlight, it's not glorifying him. But essentially, when you open a book, you've got four characters here. You've got Rick Dalton, played by Leo in the film. You've got Cliff Booth, played by um, Brad Pitt in the film. Sharon Tate, played by Margot Robbie. And Charles Manson, who I can't remember the actor's name, I apologize. So yeah, this essentially, it feels more like a director's cut of the film more so than anything, which is weird because it's a book. But you're getting more sequences, like the introductionary scene in the film with Mr. Schwarz and Rick Dalton. So Al Pacino's character and Rick Dalton. That plays out in this novel, but you get way, way, way more character interaction, as well as a huge, huge backstory for Cliff Booth himself. So in the film, Cliff is just Rick's friend, he's a stunt double, and he's the fun character. You don't really think, wow, he's a bit of a creep or he's a bit of a weirdo. Apart from a few things, like it's alluded to that he killed his wife in the film and you don't find anything out in the film, I will say, in the novel you find out, I'm not gonna say if that's a yes or a no, but you find out definitively what happened on that boat. <laughs> and this book paints Cliff in such a different light that re-watching the film, I was kind of like, damn, is that the same character? <laughs> like, Cliff in this film is very questionable, I'll say that to say the least, but he's also almost like, the best way to describe Cliff now is he's kind of like a surrogate for Tarantino. I'm not calling Tarantino a creep kind of. <laughs> but like you get in the second chapter, which is essentially dedicated to Cliff's character. For example, in the novel here, you actually find out Cliff's top Kurosawa films. Is that Tarantino? That's absolutely Tarantino. There's even a segment in the book, I'm not going to say where, where somebody talks about how their kid is a fan of Rick Dalton and the kid is called Quinton. This is a Tarantino book through and through, and if you're not a fan of Tarantino, you might not like this book. You might might not like the novel because it's very self-indulgent and it's just an absolute love letter to fans of Tarantino as well as to Tarantino himself. Like, yeah, I can see why some people might find that a bit obnoxious, but I like Tarantino. I like all of his work. There's not a single film of his I don't like. So I don't know. I was a huge fan of this novel and I had a blast with it. There's so many character moments in this, again, with like the establishment of Cliff's backstory about how he actually fought in Vietnam. You get the backstory behind Cliff's dog, Brandy. You know, the dog that lives with him. Like you find out why that dog lives with him. And it's actually a really cute story. You get more with the little girl who works on set with Rick Dalton and Rick himself. You get quite a bit of backstory between those two and like extended sequences, which is really, really cute as well. And I don't know, I just absolutely loved it. You even find out a bit more about Roman Polanski, the character in this book. And I do want to highlight, this is not trying to be a factual event. Uh, this is not trying to be a factual depiction of events. So when you see the Sharon Tate's in this, or Charles Manson, or Roman Polanski, this is a fictional sequence of events. And if you've seen the film, you already know, you already know based on that finale, why it's a fictional sequence of events. I'm trying my best not to spoil anything about the film because I do know there are people out there who haven't actually seen the film yet and I don't want to spoil it for them. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend checking out the film before reading this because I think it would be perfect reading material on its own. Like it would be absolutely fine reading it on its own if you hadn't seen the film. But I think there is a lot more to appreciate about the novel itself if you've checked out the film already. But that's just that's just how I feel about it. It might be completely different for you. So this book is around 400 pages long. There are 26 chapters. This is around the size of a text. So it's not too small, it's not too large just about right. And weirdly enough, I do not read. I do not read whatsoever. As soon as I heard this was coming out, I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick this up, read something for the first time in probably years. And I had such a fun time with it. I think Cliff, Cliff is an interesting character in this novel, to say the least. Like, 
My opinion on him as a character has changed quite a bit, and if you've read the novel, maybe you'll understand why. Um, but again, it's just as much a love letter to Sharon Tate as it originally was in the film. Rick Dalton is a really, really interesting character, even more so in this. You find out a lot more about his kind of mental health in quite a good way, quite a good way. It kind of explains some things that I had questions about in the film, and some of this stuff just wouldn't translate to film, I don't think. I don't think Tarantino could even get away with translating some of the crazy stuff that happens in here onto film, which, I mean, is kind of a blessing in disguise. But one of my favorite moments about this whole experience of kind of rewatching the film and uh, reading the book is there is a sequence in this about in the first hour or so of the film, uh, or it would be around the time, the first hour or so in the film, when Cliff has essentially went back to Rick's house to fix his antenna. If you've seen the film, you know what scene I'm talking about. And in the novel, there's actually a moment where Charles Manson is like walking back to his car and he waves over at Cliff and Cliff does not respond. What happens is Charles Manson starts like freaking out and says like, fuck you, Jack, or something along those lines. But he starts doing a dance and then it ends with uh, Cliff Booth saying, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Which I thought was absolutely hilarious. And then I saw like a few of the deleted scenes in the cinema, but I thought I'd seen them all. So I went to the Blu-ray after to have a look and there's actually the exact sequence that's in the novel, which I'd never seen before, actually was shot and filmed, and it was just cut from the film for like runtime issues. So I was going through the deleted scenes, and I was watching this exact deleted scene, which was part of the novel, and I was like, Jesus Christ, this is like from book to screen, but more so, it was from screen to book, really, because the book came after. <laughs> but I don't know, it was just very weird kind of seeing something that I'd read, like, come to life on the big screen just days after I'd read it, you know? And I thought that was awesome. If you've got the 4K release or the Blu-ray release, go check out those deleted scenes after you've read the novel if you want even more kind of book to screen like goodness essentially. So yeah, this has been a very unstructured review. I do understand that. It's more so just my thoughts on the novel and yeah, I had a really, really good time with it. I don't really know how to review books, as you can probably tell in this video. I, I assume a lot of people are gonna hate this video, so if, if this is a bad video, I do apologize. I just wanted to kind of spread the word that there's a Tarantino novel out there, and if you're a fan of Tarantino, you need to go read this. You absolutely need to go read it. But that will do it for this book review. Um, if you'd like more book reviews in the future, please let me know. <laughs> And also, I did want to mention, thank you so much for the recent support on the Apocalypse Now video collaboration I did with Movie Collector. The response has been absolutely overwhelming, and again, I can't thank Movie Collector enough for asking me to take part in it, as well as John from Mondo Chalovec Movies. And I did want to let everybody know that I'm actually going to be working on another 4K review very, very soon. It just arrived in the post, and I thought I'd give you a little teaser now if you've stuck to the end of the video. And that is one of my most anticipated 4K titles. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World on 4K. <laughs> yeah, I I can't believe it. I can't believe this film actually got a 4K release. This film bombed at the cinema, and I, I never expected it to kind of get this far in, like, home media, so I'm just absolutely overwhelmed and overjoyed by the fact that this release is a thing, and it actually has all of the bonus features on the 4K disc from what I've heard, and... Oh, I can imagine this being amazing. I'm going to be working on this review over the next few days. It might come out in a week, it might come out in two weeks, but I'm going to try and watch a film and then go through all of the bonus features, although I have seen most of them on the Blu-ray before, so I can just give my um, up-to-date thoughts, essentially. So yeah, look forward to that coming soon. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment below and tell me, do you prefer the film or the novel for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, if you've read and seen them both? If not, are you going to check out the book? Let me know, let me know, let me know. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, stay safe, have a fantastic day, and I will speak to you all later. Bye.